In this section, we're going to define our token issue flow. And this is the flow we've been talking about that will allow us to issue new token states onto the ledger. So we can see that um, we can see the steps of our flow here, and our flow follows a common pattern. So we start by choosing a notary for the transaction. Then we build the transaction. That's the code we're going to write. Then we verify the transaction. We sign the transaction. And we notarize and record the transaction. In our case, the issuer is the only signer of the transaction, so we don't need to collect signatures from other parties. However, you'll often see in more complex flows that that's a common step as well, going out to other nodes and getting their signatures. And so we've already implemented all these steps for you in the flow, except for the step of building the transaction. And building the transaction is one of the more complex steps in a flow. So you need to create a transaction builder. You need to create the actual token state that's going to be issued onto the ledger. You need to add that token state to the builder, along with a reference to the contract um, associated with that state, so the token contract in our case. Then you need to create an issue command that lists the token state's issuer as the required signer. And finally, you need to add the issue command to the builder. And once you've performed all those steps, then we'll have a full flow that our nodes can start to issue tokens onto the ledger. So let's take a look at the token issue flow now. We can start by opening up this skeleton token issue flow that we talked about. And so you can see the definition of our flow here. So this is our token issue flow, which extends flow logic, returns a signed transaction. And here we have our call method where we write out the logic of the flow. And you can see we've already implemented a lot of this. So we get the notary and our own identity here. Then we create a token state, uh, create a transaction builder, verify the transaction builder, sign the transaction, and finalize and notarize it. And you, this is the area where we need to write some code. So we need to create our token state using the token state definition we used earlier on. We need to create a transaction builder and add the token state and the issue command to that and choose a notary as well. And then we'll call verify here, and this will actually execute our contract, our token contract that we defined earlier. And to guide us, we're going to take a look at flow tests, so test Java, Java Bootcamp flow tests. And here we have a set of tests. And just like the contract test used the contract DSL, these tests use the flow testing DSL. And this flow testing DSL allows us to create what's called a mock network, which is a set of um, fast, low um, footprint in-memory nodes um, that we can use to very quickly run flows and check the results. So here you can see we're creating a new mock network. And then we're adding two nodes, node A and node B. Um, and then within the test, we can actually use this mock network. So if we get this first test here, transaction constructed by flow uses the correct notary. What we do is we create a new token issue flow here using node B as the, um, as the uh, owner of the tokens and 99 as the value of the tokens. Then we actually start this flow. So we simulate running this flow on this um, node A. And because everything's in memory and because various things are stubbed out, it executes very fast. And then we can get the result of this signed transaction. And then once we have this signed transaction back, we can look at the content so we can understand what's happened when we ran the flow. And we go and check that the signed transaction we get back has one output, which will be our token state. We extract this token state. And then we check that the notary of the token state is equal to the identity of the notary on the network. So essentially, this entire test checks that the flow we run uses the correct notary. And so our goal is to uncomment these tests and modify token issue flows so that these tests pass. Unlike with the state and contract tests, where we can uncomment them one by one and make them pass, here you'll probably have to write the entire flow before all the tests pass. Um, and there's just one thing we need to do, which is this. So if we try and run our flow tests now, so it'll take a little while, we'll spin up this mock network, but we should get an error eventually. And this is because, so if we look here, it says we're missing the Java agent JVM argument. Make sure you run the test with the Quasar Java agent. And essentially, flows in Corda can be checkpointed at any time. So for example, when you're doing long running operations like sends and receives, 
And when you run the nodes for real, this uh, quasar instrumentation of the flows happens automatically. But when you're running the test, you need to add this Java agent yourself. So if you just go to your flow tests here, edit configurations, and just change this to Java agent lib forward slash quasar dot jar. So we can try this again now. And so this is the quasar jar here in our lib folder in the root of our project. And so now we still expect it to fail because we haven't set a notary properly, but we'd expect it to fail for uh, different reasons in this case. Let's see what happens. So exactly, so now I've got null pointer exception because if you remember in our token issue flow, we left various things equal to null, the token state and the transaction builder. And you saw that the test took maybe on my machine, maybe 15, 20 seconds to spin up that mock network. But once you've got a mock network live, you can test a whole bunch of flows on it. So you don't have to do that startup time each time. And so there's several key resources at your disposal for these. Like before, we have this um, examples uh, flow pair. So under source, main, Java, Java examples, I am a flow pair. And this just shows you how to do a whole bunch of things in flows, sending, signing, storing, querying. Um, anything you might want to do in a flow will probably be shown here. And in fact, a lot of this API we won't need to use during this bootcamp. And as before, we can also go to docs.corda.net and pull up the API docs. It's under Corda Apps, Corda API. And here again, we have a flow API, which you can take a look at to understand some of the APIs around flows. So before moving on to the next section, please have a go at um, modifying token issue flow so that all the flow tests pass. Good luck.